ओम निरंजनम नित्यमनंतरूपम भक्तानुकंपाधृत विग्रहम वै ईशावतारम परमेशमीड्यम तम राम कृष्णम शिरसा नमा यथाग्निर्दाहिका शक्ति राम कृष्णे स्थिता हिया सर्वद्यास्वूपता शारदा प्रणमाम्यहम ओं नित्यशुद्धबुद्धमुक्त वेदाताबुजास्कर नमा युगकर्ता आर्तनाथ वीरेशर ओ कथात जीवन कथातलिखन हि यन कथातकर्तन तो हि यन नमो तस्म कथातकाराय श्रीरामकृष्णव्यासा श्रीमाय नमो नम ओं अहर्निशम यंठे श्रीरामकृष्णगुणकर्तन नारदवत रामकृष्णनाम सेवा ग्राहयामास तस्म रामकृष्ण प्रिय शिष्याय भक्ताग्रणिन्ये श्रीमाय नमो नम टुडे वी आर शिव टू डिस्कस द सब्जेक्ट श्री रामकृष्णास व्यास मास्टर महाशय at the outset i offer my respectful pranams to swami siddheshanand ji the adhyaksha of shri ramakrishna math kathamrita bhavan kolkata my loving regards respects to professor deepak gupta ji respectful pranams to all the elders love and best wishes to my juniors when god incarnates he brings his own people his own companions playmates along with him shri ma a master mahashay's advent his life's mission was to record and distribute share with all the ambrosial the nectarine words of the avatar varishta shri ramakrishna master mahashay we all know led a god centered life shri ramakrishna centered life both narada maharshi and vyasa maharshi we find their expression the beautiful confluence a harmonious blend of both maharshi vyasa and devarshi narada in master mahashay the uniqueness of shri ramakrishna avatar each disciple of shri ramakrishna each companion each playmate of shri ramakrishna his role in this divine cosmic drama was unique this divine drama of shri ramakrishna what is its purpose to summon every one of us to our divine heritage everyone was assigned a particular role and everyone played the role to perfection here i would like to share with you a very important fact a fact which has inspired me which has inspired thousands of people what is that there was a great poet a man of letters gnanapita awardi he was the vice chancellor in 50s and 60s of mysore university that time it was a very prestigious university and he was also an initiated disciple of shrimat swami shivananda ji maharaj mahapurush maharaj and he was considered the manasa putra the spiritual son of swami siddheshwaranand ji maharaj swami siddheshwaranand ji maharaj in his pre monastic life was from travank royal family in kerala and he became the founder of ramakrishna vedanta center in france grits near paris so this person's name is kuvempu doctor um, puttappa 
so he once went to see master mahashay along with swami siddheshwaranand ji swami siddheshwaranand ji took kuvempu to master mahashay that time probably it was 1930 or so kuvempu's age was around 25 and master mahashay was around 76 or so um so siddheshwaranand ji uh, respectfully bowed down to master mahashay and said master mahashay he is a young man his name is puttappa he is uh, a disciple of shivanand ji has written a beautiful poem on shri ram krishna so master mahashay was very happy he told you please sing the song sing the poem which you have composed so kuvempu sang it and master mahashay was mightily pleased he said my boy please get this translated into english and send it to me during master mahashay's lifetime uh, it did not happen because master mahashay passed away in 1932 but this kuvempu after some time he wrote two beautiful great biographies on of shri ramakrishna and swami ji which inspired many young men to join the ram krishna order suresh anand ji jagadath manan ji harsh anand ji purushottam anand ji they all joined after reading uh, kuvempu's biographies on thakur and ma and swami ji so this kuvempu was very close to ranganath anand ji maharaj ranganath anand ji whenever he visited mysore he made it a point to go to puttappa sort kuvempu's house and meet him personally so he has written an amazing uh prefaces to kannada gospel in kannada it is known as shri ram krishna vachana veda in bangla we know it is shri ram krishna kathamrita in hindi it is shri ram krishna vachanamrita in english the gospel of shri ram krishna in kannada it is shri ram krishna vachana veda it's the four word is very very inspiring here kuvempu writes the language is so beautiful so inspiring and this was translated into english by dr prabhu shankar who was very close to kuvempu so master mahashay writes uh, about master mahashay kuvempu writes this uh, about the gospel he says this gospel not shri ramakrishna kathamrita is a veritable temple on one's palm this gospel of shri ramakrishna i am holding this is not just an ordinary book it is a veritable temple on one's palm a veritable hermitage on one's palm a veritable place of pilgrimage on one's palm but unlike a temple or a place of pilgrimage there is no chance of its getting polluted then uh, kuvempu continues to say the home that houses this gospel will itself become a temple the house suppose this is the house of a devotee there they have this gospel every day they study gospel of ramakrishna the how the uh, home that houses this gospel becomes a veritable temple he says temple of god then the hand that holds it will be holding the very lotus feet of the lord now i am holding this gospel of shri ramakrishna i am not just holding this book i am holding the lotus feet of the lord the supreme lord lord narayana vasudeva shri ramakrishna sakshat bhagwan's uh, lotus feet i have clasped so this is how we describes it so beautifully and then he says the tongue on which its letters roll now i am reading gospel i am studying gospel hmm? the tongue on which its letters roll will be savoring nectar itself that person who is reading gospel he will be deriving great joy great bliss ambrosia amrita kathamrita tava kathamritam tapta jeevanam a life is full of difficulties it is scorched so many anxiety tensions anxieties are there tensions are there worries are there but it refreshes the life it it destroys all sins kalma shapaham kathamritam and shravana mangalam it is so be- nice to hear soothing to ears life becomes a blessing it the, the person who uh, interiorizes who inculcates these teachings of shri ramakrishna in his or her life he, he or she becomes a blessing to entire mankind then we see the 
gospel is the repository of bliss it is the ocean of peace it is the manna of divine knowledge knowledge is power knowledge, knowledge enables us so this is divine nutrition divine food it is the friend that stands by you in the hour of trouble trail and tribulations whenever in difficulties you just have to open it and see and read it stands it is like a faithful friend then it is the guru that at the moment of overwhelming joy counsels humility and devotion when we are elated when we are successful the book the gospel teaches us to remain humble to remain grateful to the lord not to forget the divine not to get um, over uh, not to get elated in the sense keeping up the sthita pragna the sthita pragna state na prahrishyet priyam prapya na udvijet prapya chashubam means when um, uh, something good happens we should not feel elated when something bad happens we should not get depressed so it teaches us equanimity of mind then it says uh, it makes you feel that you are an offering at the lord's feet i am my life is an offering at the lord's feet i am a servant of lord i am a child of lord i have no ego i am one with everybody so this sense of oneness this highest wisdom it best bestows on us and then it is the quint essence of the vedas and the upanishads it is the cream the essence just if we if one studies kathamrita carefully gospel carefully he or she gets the essence of all scriptures all vedas upanishads and then he says after reading it even the most ordinary person need not feel jealous of any scholar nor does he feel inferior to any scholar of eminence on the other hand he feels that by the grace of god none is more blessed than himself he attains peace and fulfillment so i have not studied sanskrit i have not studied nyaya i have not studied vaisheshika i have not studied purva mimamsa ar uttar mimamsa brahma so he he will not feel inferior he knows he has attained fulfillment because he has found great joy meaning and purpose of life things have been made so clear by shri ramakrishna so master mahashay is the one who is responsible for this we we cannot express our gratitude to master mahashay our indebtedness to master mahashay slowly the world is realizing and then what happens to that person who studies regularly the gospel of shri ramakrishna he acquires the vastness of the sky the immensity of the sky he attains he becomes large hearted broad minded as broad as the sky they say and as deep as the ocean he he gains the height of the highest mountains the himalayas the majesty he gets he becomes majestic and the dignity the depth the grandeur of the ocean so all that is good and great all that is pure and excellent will come to us when we study shri ramakrishna's um, gospel recorded by master mahashay when we study meditate and follow his, shri ramakrishna's instructions our life becomes a blessing uh, bl- our life becomes blessed and then he says um, never before had god incarnated in such an approachable form nor had the voice of the lord shaped itself into a book that could be read and understood by the most ordinary of men and women so he pays a great tribute homage to the gospel of shri ramakrishna so here what exactly must uh, what does it contain why this gospel of shri ramakrishna is so great kuvempu said he becomes wise he becomes mature he becomes humble he becomes capable of coping with this world uh, what is the most important teaching according to me it's my humble opinion this shri ramakrishna has told again and again and master mahashay is the person responsible for recording it he said thakur says there is a maha mantra what is that maha mantra mantra is that which saves us uh, that which um, gives us protection that which guides us that is nahang nahang tu hu tu hu not i not i but thou this is again and again repeated by shri ramakrishna and master mahashay was never tired of repeat recording this again and again so uh, this is a very important teaching of shri ramakrishna we find in the gospel what is that Na, not i not i lord only god exists i don't exist because this ego this i sense of separateness is the cause of all suffering 
श्री रामकृष्ण से इन ओरिजिनल बंगाली अमी मोल्ले गुचिपो जंजा गुचिपे जंजाल द मोमेंट दिस आई डाइज दिस सेंस ऑफ सेपरेटनेस डाइज ऑल प्रॉब्लम सीज सो इट इट टीचेस अस टू बिकम वन विद दिस एक्जिस्टेंस वन विद एवरीबॉडी आई डोंट एग्जिस्ट एज एन इंडिविजुअल आई एम सो दैट इज द हाईएस्ट ज्ञान आई एम वन विद एवरीबॉडी वन विद एक्जिस्टेंस एंड अनदर थिंग इट टीचेस ह्यूमिलिटी नाहंग नाहंग तो तो मींस इट इज गॉड एवरीथिंग आई एम जस्ट एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट इन द हैंड्स ऑफ द लॉर्ड आई एम अ स्मॉल चाइल्ड आई एम एन इन्फेंट गॉड इज गाइडिंग मी गॉड इज वर्किंग थ्रू मी दिस सेंस ऑफ डेडिकेशन कंसेक्रेशन इट इज द जिस्ट ऑफ वेदास वन श्री रामकृष्ण आस्ट मास्टर महाशय डू यू रीड भगवद गीता हैव यू अ कॉपी ऑफ द भगवद गीता इट कंटेन्स द एसेंस ऑफ ऑल स्क्रिप्चर्स ठाकुर टोल्ड अबाउट भगवद गीता सो दिस कंटेन्स इवन द एसेंस ऑफ भगवद गीता Oh, he's in, in the Bhagavad Gita. Sri Krishna says, long ago, five thousand years ago, he has dealt with this problem of anxiety. The very word, this anxiety, he has used, Sri, um, Lord Krishna. What does he say? Mai sarvani karmani sannyasya adhyatma chetasa nirashi nirmamo bhutva yudhyasva vigata jvara. Jvara means your feverishness, anxiety, tension, worries. Arjuna, give up these anxieties, worries, and all, and work for me. My sarvani karmani, work for me. Dedicate all the fruits of actions at my feet. Work with sincerity, devotion, dedication, but without any sense of attachment. Nirashi, nirmamo bhutva, yudhyasva, vigata jvara. This world, this life is a battlefield for every one of us. It's a battle. Every day, new situations crop up, new challenges. crop up we have to face so shri ramakrishna here says uh, equipped with this fortified with this wisdom knowledge naham naham tu tu not i not i but thou swami akhandanand ji says if one repeats this naham naham tu tu mantra one gets highest gnana advaita gnana he can attain nirvikalpa samadhi that is the greatness of this uh, gospel of shri ramakrishna then another very important uh, teaching uh, master mahashay has recorded thakur tells master mahashay you are my very own like uh, in the bhagavad gita shri krishna teaches the entire humanity making arjun an instrument arjun is the medium nimitta so he he tells ma manusmara yudhya cha mm, shri krishna is teaching arjun giving up this klebyam um, mas magam partai this does not this uh, uh, this fear this uh, chicken heartedness this weakness does not befit you you are a great hero fight the battle so making arjun a medium arjuna is representing the humanity so here uh, making uh, master mahashay an instrument medium shri ramkrishna is teaching all of us he he told master mahashay you are my very own of the same substance as father and son this is a great assurance so shri ramakrishna is our father eternal father and holy mother is our eternal mother real mother so shri ramakrishna said you you must know this you must realize this fact you are my own of the same substance as father and son in another place he says if somebody meditates on me he will get he or she will get all my treasure or uh, he or she will inherit my property what is shri ramakrishna's property what is shri ramakrishna's wealth that is gnana bhakti shanti wisdom knowledge then um, love for god then peace of mind bliss the blessedness a sense of blessedness freedom from all insecurity fear so this we inherit if we meditate if we read shri ramakrishna's gospel then um, there is a very beautiful description of master mahashay by paramahamsa yogananand ji i have derived great joy by um, uh, reading this i have read it again and again you also must have read this but uh, i can't resist the temptation of quoting paramahamsa yogananand ji's uh, words she says when he saw master mahashay he was a 14 year old boy that time he was mukund gosh he says the angelic appearance uh, the angelic appearance of master mahashay fairly dazzled me with silky white beard and large lustrous eyes he seemed an incarnation of purity yogananand ji writes about master mahashay this master mahashay is like an angel he is an incarnation of purity mother told nikunja devi uh, master mahashay's wife master is very pure 
he is very pure his bones muscles nose blood everything has become pure mother tells about her, her beloved child master mahashay one day a disciple had come to make pranams to mother mother asked him did you meet master mahashay no mother i don't know he is there down below go make pranams to him and come he is a great soul mahapurush holy mother the mother of the universe shri ramakrishna shakti telling her disciple to make pranams to master mahashay calling him a mahapurush a mahatma a great soul then mahasaya paramahamsa yogananand ji tells master mahashay clasping his feet please pray to the divine mother for let her grant me vision then master mahashay says okay i will make your plea to the beloved then uh, paramahamsa yogananand ji writes what power in those words that my being should no release from its stormy exile so he was suffering um, within so the moment master mahashay uttered i will pray to divine mother on your behalf then um, he had that um, vision then paramahamsa yogananand ji records um, who was the simple saint whose least request to the universal spirit met with sweet acquiescence divine mother granted a vision to master paramahamsa yogananda so he is questioning who is this sweet saint simple saint whose prayer was heard by divine mother and he calls him the greatest man of humility and he says never before had i bowed in utter reverence now i felt it an immeasurable privilege even to tread the same ground that master mahashaya's footsteps sanctified master mahashaya was living in morton institution 50 amherst street previously it belonged to paramahamsa yogananda's father Mm, he had, master mahesh had purchased it then paramahamsa yogananda ji writes this saint was a disciple of a christ like master shri ramakrishna paramahamsa then these letters i think these words must be recorded in golden characters what does paramahamsa yogananda writes master mahashay can serve as an earthly prototype for the very angels of heaven earthly prototype for the very angels of heaven then master thakur master mahesh always used to say my master told so and my thakur told me thakur has said like this and his um, sense of identity with shri ramakrishna was complete total he had no ego of his own so that is a beautiful description of master mahesh by paramahamsa yogananda ji then there is a very beautiful incident in uh, master mahesh's life it is of immense help to all of us master mahashay was in great difficulty he had lost one of his children and master mahashay's wife nikunja devi was in a state of depression she was throwing tantrums sometimes weeping sometimes laughing she had lost her mental balance she told master mahashay you are neglecting me you are not performing the duties of a husband you are frequenting dakshineshwar and i am going to commit suicide so master mahashay came to thakur and uh, confided his feelings to shri ramakrishna he told everything wife is telling like this what should i do then thakur became shri ramakrishna became very grave and said if a wife is an obstacle in the path of god realization abandon her give her don't um, entertain her then let her commit suicide or let her do whatever she likes you don't have to worry about it so master mahesh i was stunned those who were sitting uh, in the room thakur's room at dakshineshwar they were also stunned then after some time thakur came to master mahesh and whispered into his ears don't worry if one has sincere love for god everybody will come under your control if one has sincere love for god if he wholeheartedly loves god if god is the god is everything to that person god will take care of that person's needs and he says god will protect him the king shri ram krishna uses these words the king the wicked person's wife everybody will come under control so our duty is to love god wholeheartedly love thakur sincerely lord grant me love let me be able to love you uh, this you must grant this this boon you must grant that i we must be able to love you sincerely and then uh, shri ram krishna um, 
loved Master Mahashe. When Master Mahashe uh, did not come uh, for a few weeks, then Master Thakur sent word and then when he came, he said, why did you not come? My mind was dwelling on you. What happened to you? What happened to you? I was worried about you. Worried about you. So that love of Sri Ramakrishna for Master and that is why Master Mahashe all along Throughout his life, he cultivated this um, attitude, I am Thakur's servant and I am Thakur's child. That's a beautiful attitude because Thakur himself has told, you are my own, that is why you are coming here frequently. You are my antaranga, In, you belong to the inner circle and you love me, without, you don't want anything from me, still you come and hear my words. And uh, that attitude Master Mahashe cultivated throughout his life. Mm. And then at the last, these are the last words uttered by Master Mahesha. He was on his deathbed previous night. He had worked very hard. He was reading the proof of Kathamrita. The attendant said, Master Mahesha, your health is very bad. You are, excru you are experiencing uh, excruciating pain. Why are you uh, reading the proof now? It's already late. Go take rest. He said, let this body suffer. This book is giving Thakur's words, nectarine words are giving peace to thousands of people. Uh, for the sake of this mission, let this body suffer. Then that very night, uh, next day, Master Mahesha passed away. And that, before that, he said, Ma Gurudev Kole Tule Nao. Ma Gurudev Kole Tule Nao. Means, Master Thakur, Mother, please take me up in your arms. Please take me in your lap. Unless one is an infant, um, he cannot pray like that. He had that attitude. I am an infant in the hands of Thakur. So he had that. Kole tule now. Take me in your lap. So we find a beautiful um, Master Mahasaya was an embodiment of Gnana, Bhakti. All these great virtues had blended uh, harmoniously. He was a confluence of, East, like Swamiji, he had mastered Eastern philosophy, Western philosophy, logic, economics, English literature, history, law. He was a great student of law. So he was an encyclopedia of knowledge, Upanishads, everything he had mastered. But he was like a small child. Um, of Thakur and Ma. Shankaracharya has told the great, uh, great <laughs> paragon of Advaita, uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavad Pad Shankaracharya says, Mata me Parvati Devi, Pita Devo Maheshwaraha, Bandhavah Shivabhaktascha, Swadesho Bhuvanatrayam. Mother, Annapurna, Parvati is my mother, Shiva is my father. So, Master Mahashe had this attitude. Then, there are a few beautiful incidents. What are those incidents? Sharada Nandi, how much respect these direct disciples of Thakur, Sanyasi disciples of Thakur had for Master Mahashay. So, once Sharada Nandi had come from Udbodhan, all of us know Sharada Nandi had a very bulky body, big body, with great difficulty he climbed up. Master Mahashay was about to come down and receive uh, Sharada Nandi. But by the time Master Mahashay reached, so already Sharada Nandi had started climbing up. So, Master Mahashay took him to a room. There was only one chair. So, Master Mahashay requested, Sharat Maharaj, please sit. Sharat Maharaj did not sit. He said, when the teacher, when the guru, acharya, when the master is standing, how can the student stand? How can the student occupy the chair? So, that was Sharat Maharaj's humility before Master Mahashay. Then another chair was procured. Then both of them sat. Then immediately, Sharada Nanji knelt on the ground. Like a boy, he knelt down on the ground and made pranams to Master Mahashay. Master Mahashay was really surprised. Sharat Maharaj, what are you doing? What are you doing? Then he said, Sharat Maharaj said, I am making pranams to my elder brother. That was the relationship uh, direct disciples like Sharat Maharaj had with Master Mahashay. Another very touching incident took place at Belumat. Master Mahashay had come along with um, an attendant, uh, Devendra, I think he later became Swami Sadbhavananda. Master Mahasaya's stomach was delicate and he used to live on um, simple food. Uh, the, he was an embodiment of this principle, simple living, plain living, high thinking. So he had that khoi, a kind of puffed rice. He wanted a little curd from uh, Belumat kitchen, but it was not available. So he went to Thakur's Bhandar. The Bhandari Maharaj said, see, uh, offering is not yet over. 
so curd i am not able to give now then he came down the attendant of master mahashe Ma premanand ji intercepted him he said what is this why have you why had you gone there maharaj master mahashe wanted a little curd but the bhandari maharaj says after the offering he will be able to give now uh, offering is not at over so he will not be able to give master premanand ji immediately rushed to thakur bhandar took a pot of curd and immediately closed his eyes and uh, told thakur thakur please accept this and came down and offered that curd for master mahashay's use then he went back to thakur's bandar our uh, premanand ji and told see today thakur saved us from a great blunder we were about to commit a great sin a great blunder we were uh, about to deny master mahashay curd don't you know thakur eats through master mahashay he is narada he is devarshi narada he is um, maharishi vyasa so uh, had we deprived master mahashe of curd thakur would have felt very bad it would have been a great blunder on our part thakur eats through master mahashe's mouth and it's recorded whenever premanand ji met master mahashe he would make sashtang pranams because baburam maharaj <coughs> was a student of uh, master mahashe three ishwar qualities were master mahashay's disciples three ishwar kotis one is rakhal maharaj that is swami brahmanand ji was an ishwar koti he was a disciple of master mahashay then premanand ji baburam maharaj thakur told he is pure to the very marrow he was a disciple he was a student of master mahashay then purna thakur loved purna so much there is so much uh, thakur had so much um, of love for uh, purna and master mahashay was responsible for bringing purna to master to thakur so these three ishwar kotis were master mahashay's direct students master mahashay taught them baburam maharaj rakhal maharaj and purna and the sharada prasanna maharaj or trigunatita nand ji subodhanand ji they were also his students and trigunatita nand ji's incident we know trigunatita sharada prasanna was a brilliant student son of a rich landlord he had a golden watch on the day of the examination he lost his watch and he was very depressed um, he, he was not able to overcome that depression our trigunatidanan ji then master mahashay with great love tenderness he took uh, sharada prasanna to thakur and thakur removed that depression so that is how uh, in later years people used to say if you want to forget if you want to forget worldliness go to master mahashay he has that capacity power to remove your worldliness to remove your sa sadness master mahashay once told uh, uh, he used to tell his this is uh, um, what do you call satsangis devotees thakur erased all sadness from my heart thakur erased all sadness my sadness from my heart now i am full of bliss so that is um, about uh, uh, premanand ji trigunatita nand ji and the other disciples then um, master mahashay used to tell he used to speak about one bird there is a bird called stormy petrel once one uh, an young man went to master mahashay and said see i don't have peace of mind i am suffering there are a lot of difficulties then master mahashay said my young man you must be full of cheer you must be cheerful with uh, cheerfulness with uh, courage you must face this world face the difficulties and he said there is a bird called stormy petrel when storm comes when tempest rages all animals and birds all living beings go to safe places uh, to hide themselves Uh, to protect themselves from the storm whereas this stormy petrel this bird it it relishes it enjoys this challenge it comes out of its nest and it uh, moves it flies into the gusty wind that uh, storm so we must be like stormy petrel he used to say to master mahasha his life he showed he demonstrated ideal householder externally and internally a great sanyasin full of tyaga and vairagya and bhakta and uh, you know we all know swami ji's great love for master mahashay so master mahashay was like an elder brother to swami ji one side is narendra nath another side is mahendra nath swami holy mother helped both of them holy mother was responsible for the greatness of her two children narendra nath was in great difficulty dilemma to go to west or not 
and he wrote to mother mother everybody is asking me to go to the west but i am really confused then mother wrote my dear narain you will be crowned with success it is thakur's wish that you go to west and preach sanatan dharma that is narendra nath swami vivekanand mahendra nath had recorded thakur's teachings but he was finding it difficult to um, publish it he he thought how people will receive it so one day nilambar babu mukherjee's house he read out kathamrita to holy mother mother afterwards said my child i heard uh, you reading kathamrita it is as if thakur is conversing thakur's words thakur's divine presence i could feel so please publish kathamrita let everybody read unless mother made an emphatic statement unless people read study kathamrita their spiritual consciousness adhyatmik chaitanya will not be roused so without any hesitation publish and the rest is history master mahashe became an immortal soul in his in the history of human kind so by publishing this gospel of sri ramakrishna mother was responsible so he was like a small child um, and thakur mother used to say Mm, master mahashay is uh, she used to pray uh, master mahashay is unselfishness master mahashay used to work in three institutions to earn money one part of the salary for belur math one part of the salary uh, to um, so mother and another for his family so we can see this and swami ji um, after thakur's passing away he was going through a difficult uh, phase in baranagar math because thakur had called him narayana vishwa uh, nararishi came you thakur told narendra nath you came to this world to remove the sufferings of people but thakur but narendra nath sometimes criticized thakur made fun of thakur uh, he did not respond properly so uh, narendra nath uh, he he confides his heart Uh, his feelings to Ma- master mahashe and he tells his experiences with shri ram krishna what all thakur told him then master mahashe asks what else what else did thakur tell what else did thakur tell so narendra nath swami ji could confide all his feelings to master mahashe and when he read gospel for the first time narendra swami ji wrote in 1897 i think 18 uh, exact february 7 1800 on 89 or so i don't remember the exact date and the, the, those are historical words historic words mm, he says you one lakh thank 100000 thanks to you master mahashay you have hit ramakrishna in the right point mm, it's a wonder that i don't go mad my heart leaps with joy and when i find somebody thoroughly launched into this doctrine this book which is going to shower peace on earth about the gospel he said and swami ji said such an intel such a brilliant man swami ji rational scientific scintillating intellect he says um, the language is so beautiful so fresh so original um, and it was reserved for you master mahashay none of us attempted it and master's words have been recorded so faithfully and this is going to shower peace on earth socratic dialogues are played to all over means uh, plato was socrates disciple he recorded socrates teachings but uh, everywhere we could find it is plato who has written but here you are completely hi- hidden self effacement total self effacement so that is uh, swami ji on uh, um, gospel of sri ramakrishna and another important thing we learn here uh, thakur taught us to be uh, completely self surrender to the divine mother thakur teaches again and again um thakur was avatar varishta swami ji says sarva dharma sthapaka stham sarva dharma swarupaka this thakur was full of humility he t- master mahashay records when somebody when some when some stranger would come thakur would immediately pray to mother saraswati mother i am an unlettered man i am ignorant i know nothing so please uh, speak through me please sit on my tongue and speak through me so this thakur's attitude master mahashay has brought it out so beautifully he teaches all of us so what why we we may be knowing a few things you know about our subjects but regarding other fields other subjects we are awfully deficient and uh, the intellect is so puerile so puny and body is so fragile that is why thakur said mother i am nobody i am nothing i am a great fool i know nothing please guide me so this this attitude of thakur master mahashay had um, 
incorporated and internalized and throughout his life we can find this uh, um, master mahashay's humility it is master who is working through me and before uh, we end i would like to share with you paul brenton's experience of uh, master my experiences about master my his uh, description of master mahashay paul brenton um, was the pen name of a britisher englishman raffel hurst he has written a beautiful book called a search in secret india it's a best seller so he was very close to bhagwan shri ramana maharshi uh, kanchi uh, param the swami ji kanchi swami ji introduced uh, sent directed uh, paul brenton to bhagwan ramana maharshi ramana maharshi himself was a great saint uh, an illumined sage who taught everybody is this path of self inquiry who am i so he introduced uh, shri ramana maharshi to the west and accidentally paul brenton met master mahashay at calcutta and he writes a uh, when he writes about master mahashay a venerable patriarch has stepped stepped from the pages of the bible and a figure from mosaic times has turned to flesh what a beautiful language with his long white beard white mustache grave countenance and large reflect reflective eyes we all know master mahashay was a no nonsense person no nonsense person means he was very efficient very upright a man of character man of integrity so he writes uh, this uh, paul brenton was a kind of uh, skeptical person atheist did not believe in god and all but uh, master in front of master mahashay he was so humble master mahashay told him uh, it is a higher power master mahashay tells uh, paul brenton it is a higher power which has stirred you to come to india and which is bringing you in contact with the holy men of our land there is a real purpose behind that and the future will surely reveal it await it patiently then paul brenton asks him will you tell something about your master ramakrishna oh then master mahashay was so happy master mahashay was about uh, 80 years at that time or just it was i think this took place in 1932 itself fag end of master mahashay's life then master mahashay says oh now you raise a subject about which i love best to talk it's a subject very dear to my heart i find great joy when i speak about shri ramakrishna then he says i was a professor of english literature history and political economy at different times and i my head was filled with intellectual pride master mahashay is telling paul brenton then shri ramakrishna touch transform me completely i was like that peacock which was given a dose of opium on a particular day it was given so every day it uh, visited um, to get that uh, dose of opium so master mahashay says and paul brenton says then shri ramakrishna was he really a spiritual superman spiritual superman then master mahashay says yes and in my belief shri ramakrishna was a spiritual superman and even more than that so uh, this is how um, uh, paul brenton describes every day i was i used to bask in the spiritual sunshine of master mahashay's presence the atmosphere around master mahashay was so tender and beautiful gentle and loving he had found some inner bliss and the radiation of it seems palpable so everybody could feel so on this blessed day let us all pray to master mahashay pray to shri ram krishna to make us his their, their fit instruments humble instruments free us from all sense of separateness egotism make our lives blessed give us strength wisdom to cope with the challenges of life so master mahashay very is very humble at the same time full of self confidence his his life radiated that deep within he knew he is full of self confidence because thakur is protecting me thak mother divine mother is protecting me i'll be able to face all challenges i'll be able to do everything uh, in an efficient way we can see how we published Ma- gospel of shri ramakrishna is magnum opus so once again i offer my gratitude to swami siddheshanand ji my respect so to professor deepak gupta may god bless all of us om shanti 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 hari hi om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanamastu